We receive a lot of questions on this channel, and we received a question from Julie asking, why can't Protestants and other religions receive communion from the Catholic Church? Why are they excluded from the Catholic rite of Holy Communion? If a Protestant goes to another Protestant religion, or in fact, a Protestant can go to any Protestant religion and receive communion there, so why are they excluded from the Catholic Church and from Holy Communion? And that's the question we're going to be answering right after this. Hello, everybody, and welcome. If you haven't been here before, my name is Brian Mercier, and I am a professional Catholic apologist and the president of Catholic Truth, a nonprofit organization dedicated to teaching and preaching the truth of the Catholic faith in Jesus Christ without compromise and without apology. So if you want to know Catholicism, this is your channel. And if you would like a retreat or if you would like a speaker for your parish or your church, please check out our website at info at the Catholic Truth dot org. Why can't Protestants receive communion in the Catholic Church? Is it because the Catholic Church is mean and just doesn't like Protestants? No, the reality is there's a few different reasons. And the first is that Protestants and Catholics believe very different things about Holy Communion, about the Eucharist. The majority of all Protestant religions by far and away believe that the communion, right, that Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, is just a symbol. Whereas Catholics, we believe it's the real thing. It's truly the body and blood of Christ. It's truly Jesus present in the Eucharist. Protestants say, no, it's just a symbol. And so there's a big difference between the two. Why would you want to receive communion in the Catholic Church when you don't even believe what we believe in in the first place? Now, if you take Lutherans or someone like that who believe there is some sort of a presence, consubstantiation in Holy Communion, even still, it's different than the Catholic Church, which believes in transubstantiation, which Jesus is fully present there, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and it's the greatest kingly gift that we can receive on this earth. So there's a difference there. Protestants, even among themselves, believe different things about what Holy Communion is, but it, it really comes down to it's not the real thing, so anyone can pretty much receive it because it doesn't matter. I mean, Protestants don't have, and, and I don't mean any offense by this, I don't mean to offend anyone, but they don't have the real thing. They don't have the real Holy Communion given to us by Christ. And so to go to different Protestant churches is okay because none of them have the real thing. And in the Catholic Church, we believe we really do have the true presence. And if you uh, want to receive communion in the Catholic Church, then you first have to believe that it's really Jesus. Now, every once in a while, there's a Protestant who says, well, I do really believe that it's, you know, Jesus. And in our church, we really do believe and teach that Jesus is fully, completely, 100% present there, just like Catholics do. And I said, okay, well, even if you do believe that, I'm not sure why, because that's not what Protestants believe, but even if you do it's still not the real thing in your Protestant church because you don't have the authority to make it the body and blood of Christ. Whereas from the earliest days of Christianity, they passed on the authority of Christ and the apostles through the laying on of hands, which have come down to Catholic priests and bishops down through the centuries who have the authority to make the body and blood of Christ. Of course, it's all the power of God. It's all the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms bread and wine into his body and blood, into his true presence. But Protestants don't believe that. So why would you want to receive something you don't believe in the first place? In order to receive it in the Catholic Church, you have to believe it. So that's the first thing. The second thing, though, is even if you do believe it, let's just say, the, the next part of Holy Communion, when, when the priest will give you the Holy Communion, he says, this is the body of Christ. And you say, amen, which means, I believe, so be it. So if a Protestant comes up and doesn't believe it, you're actually lying in church saying, yes, I believe it. Amen. Give it to me. It's really true. But that's not what you believe. So that's problematic in itself. But even beyond that, even if you do believe it, the second part of Holy Communion is that the for the Eucharist, for Catholics, it symbolizes unity. The one holy Catholic and apostolic church started by Jesus. The one faith, the one hope, the one baptism, and the one banquet table of the Lord. See, when Jesus started the Catholic Church, he didn't start thousands of denominations. He started one church with one faith, hope, baptism, and one Lord's Supper. And it wasn't until 1,500 years later that Martin Luther broke away from that, changed the teaching on the Eucharist, and it wasn't long after that that 
Calvin and Zwingli all disagreed with each other on the Eucharist, and there are over 200 different definitions of this is my body in the Protestant world. They all believe different things. But in the Catholic Church, we believe in a unity that we're all called to be part of the one church in Christ. And so how can you receive communion in the Catholic Church if you're not part of that one church, if you're not part of that unity of Christ? Think of the Old Testament if you think the Catholic Church is being unfair. There was one covenant, the Old Testament covenant of the Jews, and you had to be part of it. And there were certain conditions that needed to be met, including being circumcised, if you wanted to take part in the blessings of the covenant. And no dogs or pagans or anyone else outside of the Old Testament covenant was allowed to share in the blessings of the children. And this is the biblical language, not mine. So you had to actually become Jewish to take part in the blessings. And same thing in the New Testament. You have to be part of Christ's church to take part of the New Testament blessings. One of these blessings is the Eucharist, which is the supreme gift that Jesus has given us. And if you look in the Gospels, the, Jesus says, this is my body, the blood, and, and this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is given for you. So he's associating the new covenant and the sign of the new covenant with the Eucharist. It's the central aspect of our faith, of the, the New Testament church, of the New Testament body, the Catholic church. So in the Catholic church, it's not just something like I've seen in Protestant churches where they just leave it on the altar floor and say, hey, if you want some, go get it. If you don't, no biggie. You know, it's like it doesn't even mean anything to them. This is the one of the pinnacles of the Catholic faith because Jesus himself is present there. So you have to be part of the unity. You have to be part of the covenant. You have to be part of the one body of Christ, which is the Catholic Church. It's kind of like a soccer team. And I don't mean to be offensive here, and please don't take offense to this. It's just an analogy that I thought up. But I remember growing up and I tried out for uh, elite soccer teams. Now, if you went to any town team, you could join any town team at any time. They had no restrictions. They weren't that good. But for the elite teams, the travel teams, you had to try out for that. And you had to be selected for it. Nobody could just join it whimsy-mimsy. You know, you had to be chosen. It's kind of like there was something you had to work for. There was something you had to work toward. Whereas the lower teams weren't that good, you know, they didn't really take much. You could just join it. So other ones didn't really have any standards where elite soccer teams and elite sports teams that you have to try out for, they have standards. They have things that need to be met. It's not unfair. It's just what's demanded of them because they don't take anyone. And the Catholic Church takes anybody, but not at any time in any way. If you thirst for the Eucharist, if you desire Jesus, and there are many Protestants who actually desire and they, they see what the Catholic Church has and they desire it. And they're on their way to becoming Catholic. Others have already gone from Protestant to Catholic and now partake in the Eucharist. And some still want to, but haven't started that journey yet. Wherever you're at, if you would like to take part in the Eucharist, in the Eucharistic banquet table of our Lord Jesus, the real thing, we would invite you to consider becoming Catholic. Kind of like trying out for an elite sports team and going through the steps that you need to, if you would like to become Catholic, you have to sign up and you have to take classes. You have to make sure it's something that you really want to do. You have to pray about it, discern it, make sure it's, you know, really what you want. And then if you do, you go through the classes, make sure you, all your questions are answered, make sure that you understand what being Catholic is all about. And then you are brought into the full unity of the apostolic faith that has been here for over 2,000 years. Then in that, that time, in front of all the church, you will become Catholic and you will receive Jesus Christ, your Lord, in you for the first time ever. I mean, Protestants say they have a personal relationship with Jesus, and some of them do, and many Catholics do as well. But this is as personal as you can get when you receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And I would like to invite you to consider that. And we have a video if you want to understand the Eucharist more and the true presence of Jesus and understanding it from the Bible, history, and tradition. Please check out our, our, our video right there. We'll link it there and we'll link it down below and at the end as well. But check it out. It will give you the information that you need. And of course, if you have any questions about this, please ask. Please put it in the comments section below. 
But as you can see, we answer lots of questions about the Catholic faith from people who ask them. First and foremost, we answer the questions of our patrons. You know, if you support our ministry and you support us, say, $50 a month, I believe it is, then we will move your questions and you want us to make a video, we will move that to the top of the list because we have like over 200 videos. But sometimes we make videos of just your questions answered and we take a whole bunch of questions and we answer them. So check out our folder. If you haven't yet, we have a whole folder full of your questions answered and lots of questions that people ask. And we plan to make more in the future. But if you would like to help share this gospel and help evangelize and get this message out there, then please share this video. Please like this video. And if you like our channel and you really want to know a ton about Catholicism and really learn your faith, then make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification icon people have been saying they're not getting the videos and you have to hit the bell notifications. Lastly, I just want to thank all of our patrons and the people who have been supporting us monthly and even just giving donations through Patreon or through our PayPal. We want to thank you because it's you who make our mission possible. It's you who allow us to reach other people for Christ. And it's you who allow us to save souls and to change lives for Christ. So if you are not a patron and you'd like to support our ministry, please consider doing so. Check out our Patreon below. Check out our podcast our Facebook, our Instagram. And again, if you need a speaker for your parish, a retreat speaker, an online confirmation retreat, check out our website at info at Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.